Hello, my dear gardening friends. My household is staying in today. Everybody is in. The weather is very cold outside. I believe last night we had minus three Fahrenheit and there is no way I'm going outside into the garden to do at least something to fight my cabin fever. Right now is the beginning of February. I'm staying in. Today is Saturday, cold, and I'm addressing several questions of yours. And uh, the questions would be about rose sawfly and how to keep roses inside of the garage in winter. So let's go straight to the question. Our viewer asked me this, uh, wrote me this. I spent my cold day watching your video. I love your garden. I have roses and hydrangeas and butterfly bushes plus other flowers. I have some questions, please. I want to add roses to containers this year, but my garage is not heated. So how would I store it for winter? Also, last year I had lots of trouble with sawfly on my roses. They ate the leaves terribly. How do you stop pests from eating your plants? Thank you for your videos. I'm trying to learn. Well, thank you for your message. I would be very happy to answer. So let's attack the question not attack. Let's address the question of sawfly. And before I go deep into that question, uh, I want to address the general approach which we should have about any pests in our gardens. So pests are bad bugs. Uh, and uh, the way we should approach them, we should know our enemy very well. And by that, I mean that we should know the life cycle of that enemy, how it functions in our garden, and we should know when would be the best time to address the issue with uh, overpopulation with the least harmful uh, remedies, which would be easy on our budget, which would be very effective, and which would be not as harmful to our plant and to our gardens. We have to remember about the balance. In my garden, I do have sawflies, not many of them. I ended up maybe every year at the end of the season, I might have one or two leaves on every rose being um, eaten by sawflies. And the way so uh, sawflies eat, the, the sawfly larvae eat the leaves, we will address that later, how it looks. But why don't I have any big infestations? Well, I uh, let garden um, maintain its own balance between bad and good guys. And looks like the presence of good uh, enemies of uh, sawflies, um, they are there in my garden and they're keeping my garden uh, pests in check in a way. I can see them in the garden, but they are not uh, out of control. So if you intervene in your garden with strong pesticides, you get rid of all the good bugs. Guess what? Bad bugs wouldn't have enemies uh, and they will be destroying your garden. So it's very important to um, not to intervene in your garden with strong chemical sprays, pesticides, and uh, let garden try to solve the problems, give the garden that role to um, kind of solve the problems of pests. I understand it can be difficult, especially if you're switching your garden from a, a heavy pest a pesticide usage to a more natural way. But eventually that balance develops. And for example, in my garden, yes, sawfly is present, but every year I see these beautiful little chickadees and they are everywhere in my garden. They're flying around and sometimes when they are on my rose bushes, they go leaf after leaf, branch after branch, so persistently. And they're eating something, they're picking something. And who knows what? Maybe they're picking sawfly larvae for me and I don't even know about it. So let's go into the life cycle of sawfly. There are different types of sawflies. Uh, some attack trees, some attack different plants. They have different life cycles, but rose sawfly attacks roses and they have one cycle a year and they have four different stages. So at the beginning of spring, sawfly adults emerge from the ground and the female sawfly lay eggs on the underside of uh, the leaves of our roses. And then several weeks later, the larvae hatch and the beautiful one month begin of eating our roses. 
So what happened during this months of eating when we don't check and we don't see what's happening with our roses? Larvae is, are eating ferociously and they attack only the soft tissues of the leaf, not membranes, and eventually uh, those spots become brown and the cosmetical effect is horrible. Leaves will eventually fall off. And if we don't stay on top of the problem, um, within one month, rose can be completely defoliated. And then, when sawfly larvae have their feast, they become big and fat. They're not really big, they're under one inch, uh, two-thirds of an inch. They, f they go into the ground and they go into their fourth stage. They go into their little cocoons and they overwinter to again emerge next year as adults and to start the cycle all over again. So the best way for our viewer is patiently wait till... Uh, um, I would say the middle of spring, when the uh, sawfly larvae starts to emerge on the underside surface of her rose leaves, and then take action. And by action I mean she can use either horticultural oil, neem oil, and uh, please do follow the instructions on the label. Uh, horticultural oil during summer applications is... Um, is designed for much uh, lighter uh, proportions, so pay attention to that. And if you do a thorough spray on the underside of leaves, please do it in, in the morning or in the evening where the beneficial pollinators are not there. And you can take care after the population very quickly in a way. So that would be the best advice to do if you have really strong infestation. Also, what you can do in your garden is introduce food and water for birds. Invite different birds. And uh, in my garden, I have a bird feeder and I have also water for birds. And I do have a lot of birds running around, looking at leaves, looking under the shingles of my house. And I see a lot of them going through my roses as well. Also, it's good to have diversity in your garden. If you have just this monoculture, of grass, meaning there are blades of grass over and over and over again for many meters growing around the house. It's not really inviting either for insects or for birds, but from the message of the viewer, I see that she has hydrangeas, butterfly bushes, other perennials, so her garden is diverse. By all means, try not to use heavy pesticides because you want to invite good bugs coming into your garden. And natural pests of uh, rose uh, uh, sawflies are wasps, some beetles, some little mammals. And uh, in case the uh, infestation is small, you can just knock them to the ground or use strong uh, uh, water current to knock them off to the ground and then they will be easy food for birds and other predators to pick. Another question would be about roses in containers in our garages. As long as garage is not frozen, it is attached to the house, it's not um, freezing, there are no freezing conditions in the garage, you can keep your roses there. Mind you, you have to keep roses away from the floor. My garage has cement floor, which is very cold. So if you can put some wooden uh, planks on the ground or some sort of elevated surface, this way your pots with roses are not going to get all that coldness from the floor. And of course, keep your roses watered in the garage. They don't need so much water. Maybe a cup of water a week would be sufficient. And in those conditions, your roses will be hibernating very well and would be ready to start growing next year. So I hope this video was really helpful and it uh, empowered our viewer to patiently wait for the middle of spring and then take action against her sawfly population. I will see you around. Have a lovely day.